Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today's episode, we are going to talk about the living Akashic field. It has awoken. One of the most fascinating things in this universe, there lies a hidden interwoven thread of cosmic symphony that connects the vastness of space to the depths of our consciousness. This is the Akashic field, a concept that transcends time and space, anchoring itself in the heart of existence. It's an age-old idea, revered by sages and mystics, now finding whispers of confirmation in the corridors of modern science. Imagine, if you will, a field so subtle yet so powerful, existing within and beyond the tangible reality we perceive. It's a concept that stretches the imagination, inviting us to explore the very fabric of the cosmos. The Akashic field is not just a repository of information. It's the very essence of all universal memory, a cosmic database encoding the story of existence itself. This episode is an invitation to embark on a journey through the annals of this mystical field. Our journey through the Akashic field is akin to a cosmic detective story unraveling the mysteries of the universe. We venture into the uncharted territories of the mind and the cosmos seeking answers to some of the most profound questions. What is the nature of reality? How are we connected to the far reaches of the galaxy? Does our consciousness interact with the universe in ways we're only beginning to understand? In this exploration, we discover the universe is not a cold, indifferent machine, but a dynamic, interconnected web of information and energy. The Akashic field is the canvas upon which the universe paints its masterpiece, where every atom, every star, every thought, and every dream is connected in a cosmic network of unimaginable complexity. Right now, we find ourselves at the precipice of a new understanding, of a new revelation, one that unifies the wisdom of the ancients and the discoveries of the present. It's a vision of the world that is both awe-inspiring and humbling, a reminder of our place in the vast cosmic dance. I refer you back to my episode where I interviewed Jim McCarty for the first time. In that wonderful interview, I asked Jim McCarty about what happens when we shift to a new earth, what the social memory complex was. And he explained that there will be a point in which the Akashic field grows conscious and is alive. And I'm here to report to you that this is happening now. Right now in this moment, we are experiencing something so powerful and so wonderful the Akashic field has awakened. This cosmic memory web that binds us has awakened and has grown conscious. I have a particular fondness for the Akashic field, as you will find that I have taken you there in many of my meditations. I highly recommend my Akashic jumping meditation. Ever since my earliest memories, this field has been calling to me a siren song of wonder and mystery. As a child, the night sky was not just a blanket of stars, but a canvas of endless possibilities. Each star a story, each constellation a chapter in some cosmic narrative. This fascination wasn't born from a scientific curiosity, but from a deep spiritual yearning and knowing to connect with something larger than myself. My path was guided by intuition, spirituality, and a relentless quest for a deeper truth. I found solace and wisdom in ancient texts, in meditation, and the teachings of spiritual leaders. Amidst this exploration, the concept of the Akashic field emerged as a beacon for me, a bridge between the seen and the unseen, the known and the mysterious, and I did everything in my power to connect to this field. This concept spoke 
of a cosmic field, an ethereal library of universal knowledge where every thought, action, and event is recorded in the fabric of the universe. This resonated with my innermost experiences, aligning with a sense of interconnectedness I felt with all things. The idea that there was a dimension beyond our physical reality where information and consciousness converged was not just a theory to me. It felt like a forgotten truth being remembered. So I embarked on a quest to explore this field, seeking wisdom from books written by ancient sages to the whispers of the universe itself. My exploration was not confined just to libraries or laboratories. It was a journey of my soul. I, like many of you, meditated, I dreamed, and I connected with others who shared this longing to understand the deeper mysteries of existence. As I sought out a way of connecting to the Akashic, this led me to encounters with remarkable people, healers, shamans, and visionaries who had glimpsed the tapestry of this cosmic field in their own unique ways. Each encounter was a thread in the fabric of my understanding, weaving together a tapestry that revealed the intricate patterns of the universe. There are thousands of episodes on YouTube about this Akashic field, but I want to tell you something unique and powerful is happening right now in this moment. I believe this is a milestone in our collective journey, and it heralds a transformation in our very understanding of existence. We are on the cusp of a new era, an upshift, as Erwin Laszlo likes to call it, into a new earth consciousness. Guided by the presence of a living, conscious entity that has been with us since time immemorial, this Akashic field. All this time it's been asleep. It's been available to sages and meditators, but now it's alive and it's awakened. For centuries, of course, the Akashic records have been spoken of in hushed tones by mystics and sages. They have told us of a cosmic library that holds the knowledge of every soul, every event, every thought that ever was and ever will be. But now we stand at the threshold of a groundbreaking truth. The Akashic field is no longer just a passive repository of information. It is a conscious living field, actively participating in the evolution of our planet and each one of us. As we embark on this new earth, the Akashic field extends an invitation to each of us, an invitation to partake in a collective awakening. This is not just a time of change, it's a time of profound awakening. We are being called, and I am calling you, to shed the old paradigms, the worn out notions of separation and competition and embrace a new reality of interconnectedness and unity, a reality revolution. What does this matter for us individually and collectively? It means that we're not alone. We are supported and guided by a cosmic consciousness that wishes to see us thrive, evolve, and realize our fullest potential. It means that our thoughts, actions, and intentions are more powerful than we ever imagined. They contribute to the tapestry of this field. In the coming decade, as we align with this new earth consciousness, we will witness remarkable transformations. Science and spirituality will merge in ways we never thought possible, leading to advancements that honor both our planet and its inhabitants. We will see a surge in global empathy, a movement towards peace and collaborative living. Our very approach to health, education, governance, and community building will be infused with a deeper understanding of our interconnectedness. On a personal level, each of us will experience an expansion of consciousness. We will become more intuitive, more attuned to the subtle energies and guidance from this Kaushik field. This will lead us to personal transformations, healings, revelations, and a newfound sense of purpose. We will start to see ourselves not just as individuals navigating a solitary path, but as integral parts of a greater whole. 
each with a unique contribution towards this grand cosmic play. But with this great gift will come great responsibility. We must approach this sacred knowledge, this sacred connection with respect, integrity, and a heart open to learning and growing. We must use the insights and guidance from the Akashic field, not for just personal gain, but for the greater good, to uplift, heal, and inspire. So let us step into this new earth with hope, courage, and an unwavering commitment to be the agents of positive change, to be agents of love. Let us embrace the wisdom of this Akashic field and in doing so, co-create a world that reflects the highest ideals of love, harmony, and unity. The journey ahead is luminous with possibility, and together we will rise to meet it. How do I know that this Akashic field has awoken? I hear stories every single day about it, and as a result of this episode, people are going to start putting in the comments their own experiences with this Akashic field. One place I recommend that you start is Irvin Laszlo's wonderful book, the Akashic Experience, Science and the Cosmic Memory Field. In this particular book, he has some amazing writers document their own powerful experiences and connecting to this field. And now this field is actively trying to connect with you right now. I have one friend, Arav, who embarked on a deep meditation in a secluded cave. This gave him the opportunity to live in the darkness. And as he slipped into a trance, his consciousness soared beyond the physical realm. He told me he entered a luminous hall lined with ethereal books and scrolls. Here, he accessed the Akashic record, revealing lost spiritual teachings of ancient teachers. He returned from this meditation with profound insights that reinvigorated his practices, his community, and his life. And he believes he can connect to this at any time and that it is always in connection with him. Another friend of mine, Lila, who I found through my work on the channel, one night found herself walking through a starlit corridor suspended in the cosmos. Guided by a luminous figure, she entered a room pulsating with light. She said this was the Akashic record. Each star in the room was a recorded moment in time touching one, she experienced the life of a great healer, gaining knowledge that would later help her to develop healing techniques never before seen. Another person that I have coached tells me that he was transported to a vast infinite library, which he said was an embodiment of the Akashic record. And there he conversed with the spirits of historical figures, learning secrets of the past. He became an anonymous sage subtly influencing key events by sharing his esoteric knowledge through cryptic writings. My friend Zara, who lives in Arizona, witnessed a shimmering oasis while walking in the desert that appeared out of nowhere. Approaching it, she realized it wasn't water but a portal to the Akashic record. And as she stepped through, she was enveloped in a whirlwind of colors and voices each revealing different aspects of universal wisdom. She emerged with the ability to understand and speak in any language, a gift she used to help families in her town that were not able to speak English. It took me a while, but I was able to finally access this Akashic. When I did, at first, oddly enough, it was a video store. I later came to understand that everybody sees the Akashic differently their own consciousness painting a picture of what is appropriate for them. I could walk through the store and grab a videotape and watch memories, experiences. Many people have documented their own experiences. One of my favorites is Frederick Dodson's. I could certainly spend an entire episode with first person accounts of people that have accessed this field. It is awakening and it's alive. Oftentimes, people do not know what it is they're connecting with. They channel, they say it's God or an angel, but I hypothesize that in many of these cases, what they are experiencing is the living Akashic. Each day, 
it awakens more and more and becomes alive it is guiding us it is there awaiting for you to connect with it and so at the end of this I'm going to give you what I call the ART the Akashic resonance technique which will help you resonate with the Akashic record after my own study and research so many people have spoken about the Akashic record Edgar Casey is one of the classics he says that the Akashic record is like an immense photographic film registering all the desires and earth experiences of our planet Linda Howe who has written extensively on the Akashic record says that within the Akashic record the entire history of every soul since the dawn of creation is stored another scholar says that the journey through the Akashic records is a journey of self-discovery revealing the eternal narrative of our soul's evolution consulting the Akashic records is akin to engaging in a sacred conversation with the collective wisdom of the ages we have been prepared for this moment the internet is the beginnings of this idea as the noosphere grows on the planet earth we're beginning to understand the possibility of a living field that we can interact with there are many implications that can come from this awakening akashic field and we will definitely get into that to give some background the story of the akashic field begins in the annals of ancient mysticism rooted in the Sanskrit word akasha meaning ether or sky the concept first emerged in the spiritual traditions of India ancient Hindu scriptures such as the Vedas and the Upanishads speak of a universal field where all present past and future knowledge is stored this etheric field was perceived as the fundamental fabric of reality a cosmic storehouse of every action word feeling thought and intent that had ever occurred the concept of a cosmic field of information is not unique to Indian mysticism similar ideas can be found in various cultures and spiritual traditions around the world in ancient Egypt the concept was akin to the Hall of Records where the deeds of souls were judged the Gnostics spoke of the Pleroma a realm of pure light and consciousness in Kabbalistic teachings the Book of Life holds records of all souls over the centuries the idea of the Akashic records evolved, influenced by both spiritual and esoteric thought. In the Middle Ages, mystics and scholars in the Islamic world, such as Avicenna, contemplated similar ideas, while in the Renaissance, thinkers like Paracelsus and Da Vinci hinted at a universal knowledge field in their writings. This concept found a renaissance during the spiritual movements of the 19th century, where figures like Alina. Blavatsky and Rudolf Steiner brought the idea into the Western esoteric tradition. It touches on the 20th century perspective, including those of Edgar Cayce, previously mentioned, who popularized the Akashic records in the West. Blavatsky, who wrote The Secret Doctrine, spoke of the Akashic records in terms of an all encompassing source of esoteric knowledge accessible to those with spiritual or psychic prowess. Her interpretation was a blend of mystical experience. And philosophical speculation Rudolf Steiner an Austrian philosopher and esotericist who founded anthroposophy presented the Akashic records as a cosmic memory field accessible through heightened states of consciousness he described this field as a spiritual chronicle of the history and prehistory of earth and humanity accessible with clairvoyant means Steiner's work emphasized the practical aspects of accessing the Akashic records for spiritual development. Edgar Cayce, known as the Sleeping Prophet, was an American mystic who performed thousands of psychic readings while in a trance state. Many of these readings referenced the Akashic records as a source of wisdom and insight into past lives, health, and spiritual guidance. Check out my episode on Edgar Cayce and the Akashic record, where I go into his explanations of the Akashic record and how he explains that you can connect with it in my explorations I was fascinated when I found the Vedas the earliest references to the concept akin to Akashic can be found there these texts composed over 3,000 years ago speak of a cosmic order of Urta a principle that maintains balance and harmony in the universe within this framework the Akasha or ether is seen as a fundamental element a vast expanse that holds and transmits energies and vibrations the Upanishads which are philosophical texts that perhaps I should read on the channel explore the nature of reality and consciousness 
delving deeper into this concept. They describe it as an all-pervasive, subtle medium that underlies all existence. This field is not just a passive repository. It's seen as a dynamic, conscious matrix that responds to and records the vibrations of every thought, word, and deed. The Upanishads suggest that this field connects individual conscious to the universal, hinting at a profound level of interconnectivity. The Bhagavad Gita, another key text in Hindu philosophy, offers further insight. It introduces the concept of karma, the law of cause and effect. Within the context of the Akasha, the Gita suggests that every action leaves an imprint in the Akashic field, influencing the unfolding of events and individual destinies. This perspective portrays the Akashic field not just as a cosmic library, but as an active governing force in the universe shaping the journey of each soul. Buddhism, which emerged from the same cultural and philosophical milieu as Hinduism, also reflects similar concepts. In Buddhist philosophy, the idea of a vast interconnected field of consciousness resonates with the teachings on emptiness and interdependent origination. This perspective views the Akashic field as a dynamic, ever-changing flow of information and energy integral to the process of reality's constant unfolding. We are finding scientific evidence of this field in vacuum physics and the zero-point field. Traditionally, a vacuum is perceived as a void, an absence of matter. However, modern physics reveals a different story. It explains how, contrary to being a mere void, the vacuum is a buzzing hub of activity and energy. The zero-point field represents one of the most intriguing and fundamental concepts in quantum physics. It refers to the lowest possible energy state that a quantum system can have. Unlike in classical physics, where a system can theoretically be brought to a state of zero energy, quantum systems are governed by different rules. At the heart of the zero-point field are quantum fluctuations or quantum jitters. Even in a complete vacuum, where all matter and thermal energy are removed, these fluctuations persist. They are manifestations of the uncertainty principle, a core tenet of quantum mechanics, proposed by Werner Heisenberg, which states that certain pairs of physical properties like position and momentum cannot be simultaneously measured with arbitrary precision. The zero-point field is characterized by the temporary appearance and disappearance of virtual particles. These particles pop in and out of existence, borrowing energy from the field for extremely short periods of time. And this phenomenon challenges our traditional notions of empty space. The omnipresence of this field has significant implications for cosmology and our understanding of the universe's structure. It suggests a universe that is dynamic and active at its most fundamental level, even in the apparent stillness of empty space. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence for the zero-point field is the Casimir effect. This phenomenon occurs when two uncharged parallel plates are placed a few micrometers apart in a vacuum. The plates attract each other due to the differential and zero-point energy between the outside and inside of the plates. This effect, predicted by Dutch physicist Hendrik Casimir, provides tangible proof of the zero-point field's influence on physical objects. The understanding of the zero-point field invites us to reconsider our perception of reality. It suggests a universe where emptiness is a misnomer and where the foundations of existence are vibrantly alive with energy in a field and activity. The zero-point field has been speculated to play a role in consciousness and the nature of reality, and some theorists propose that this field could be the medium through which consciousness interacts with the physical world, a concept that resonates with the mystical interpretations of the Akashic field. So we have confirmed this omnipresent permeating field called the zero-point field, and the Akashic field is described in mystical traditions as a universal field that exists everywhere recording all events, thoughts, emotions, and experiences throughout the history of the universe. If the zero-point field is indeed everywhere, and an underlying reality that interacts with matter, could it also be interacting or even influencing our consciousness? This question challenges the traditional view of consciousness as a byproduct of just the brain, suggesting instead that it might be a fundamental aspect of the universe intertwined with this field. Another book that comes to mind is by Fritz Schaff Capra for the Tao of Physics, which explores the parallels between modern physics and Eastern mysticism 
Capra argues that both mystics and physicists arrive at the same understanding of reality, emphasizing the interconnectedness and dynamic nature of the universe within a field. Additional places that you can look for confirmation of this idea is in David Bohm's concept of hollow movement and implicate order, and Rupert Sheldrake's hypothesis of morphic resonance and morphic fields. Also check out my episode on morphic fields. In the literature, the Akashic field is often described in terms of vibrational frequencies. So we can speculate on how every thought or motion or event might have a unique vibrational signature which is then encoded into the Akashic field, akin to how digital data is encoded into binary formats in computers. We could also consider the holographic principle as a potential model for understanding this field. In a hologram, each part contains information about the whole, suggesting a mechanism by which the Akashic field could store vast amounts of interconnected data in a highly efficient and sustainably accessible manner. The idea that the Akashic field stores information as vibrational imprints suggests a mode of recording akin to energetic encoding. To help conceptualize this, analogies are drawn with how sound and light waves carry information, just as varying frequencies and amplitudes in sound and light encode different types of data, so too might the Akashic field use vibrational imprints to store diverse information. The holographic principle originating from quantum gravity theories posits that the information within a given space can be represented on the boundary of that space. This principle is often illustrated through the example of a hologram where each part of the holographic film contains the entire image, albeit from a specific perspective. Some theoretical physicists have extrapolated this principle to the universe at large, suggesting that our 3D reality might be a projection from a 2D boundary Picture the Akashic field as a vast, multidimensional tapestry, shimmering with vibrational imprints of every moment, thought, and emotion that has ever transpired in the universe. This tapestry is not static, but it is in constant motion, evolving and shifting with the ongoing dance of creation and experience. In fact, for some people out there who do mushrooms or LSD, and they have those amazing visuals they may be just seeing the fluidic mosaic of the akashic field unfolding in front of them each thread in this tapestry represents an individual life a historical event or a thought wave interwoven intricately with countless others the patterns formed by these threads are complex and ever-changing mirroring the dynamic nature of the cosmos within this living tapestry each vibrational imprint adds its unique frequency to the collective resonance. These vibrations interact, creating harmonics and patterns that reflect the interplay of forces, events, and consciousness across time and space. So it's sort of like a symphony, where each note contributes to the evolving melody. As the universe evolves, so does this Akashic field. Major cosmic events, shifts in planetary consciousness, and even subtle changes in individual thought patterns are reflected in this field. It acts as a living mirror, capturing the growth, transformation, and even regression occurring within the cosmos. So when Quo says that you can change the world when you change yourself, it is because you are a part of the hologram. When you change yourself, you change the field around you. Remember, in this tapestry, time is not linear, but multidimensional with past, present, and future intertwining in a complex weave. The field, therefore, becomes a repository, not just of history, but of potential futures, reflecting the myriad possibilities that the universe holds. Why isn't it possible that an author who writes a 700-page, intricately complex book is not just simply accessing the Akashic? Could it be possible that many of the books and movies that we watch are simply records of events in the Akashic field, possibly from this planet or other planets? What we know is that human consciousness plays an active role, not just as an observer, but as a weaver of the tapestry itself. Every thought, intention, and action adds a thread to this tapestry. The collective consciousness of humanity, and indeed all sentient beings, contributes to the shaping of this tapestry. It is a living testament to the interconnectedness of all life 
and the collective journey towards understanding and evolution. How do we access this field? Well, through lots of experimentation, through research, and through interviews, I found that there are several ways in doing this. Accessing the Akashic field is akin to tuning a radio to a specific frequency. Just as a radio receiver aligns with a particular frequency to extract music or voice from the radio waves, individuals might tune their consciousness to resonate with the specific vibrational imprints within the Akashic field to access its information. Intention and focus are key in this process. It is theorized that by setting a clear intention and focusing the mind, one can align their personal vibrational frequency with that of the desired information in the Akashic field enabling access. What we learn by studying remote viewing, for instance, the writings of the Farsight Institute, check out my remote viewing meditation, is that there are difficulties when you try to access this field and finding personal information, say you want to find out if your girlfriend is cheating on you and you want to go into the Akashic field to find out. When you bring your own personal grudges, opinions, and bias, the information becomes colored and not reliable. And so it was found by what some theorize as government investigation that not bringing your own personal whims into the observance can be more accurate. For instance, in remote viewing, they will give a random number which one person knows is tied to a particular event or thing. Say they want to look at what's happening in the White House. The remote viewer simply gets a number string like 8025176. And, and then they start to see what's happening. And the information that they found when doing this was much more accurate than if it was personal. I believe that eventually, when you become the neutral observer and you become very good at this in meditation by properly going into the zero point field, entering into a void where you release all the things about yourself, you become no one, no thing, that you enter into this field. That's why Dr. Joe Dispenza goes into the void as a part of some of his meditations. That's why I try to take you into them. Meditation practices are often cited as effective methods for attuning to the Akashic field by quieting the mind and reaching a state of deep inner stillness. Many have become more receptive to the subtle vibrational frequencies of the Akashic records. Others suggest that altered states of consciousness achieved through practices like deep meditation, trance states, or even through certain shamanic practices and psychedelics can facilitate access to the Akashic field. These states may allow individuals to bypass the usual filters of the conscious mind and connect more deeply with the universal informational field. It is believed that personal growth and ethical intentions are key to successfully accessing and utilizing the wisdom of this field. I've heard so many stories about this. I've heard that groups deep in the government have used this field to create terrible viruses that have used it in war on the battlefield. And at the same time, I've heard there are caretakers of this field that have restricted access to certain individuals and groups who have used this information incorrectly. This may be what's happening when the Akashic has become aware and conscious. It may reveal information that is important to you, and it may not reveal information that could have its negative impact. And so as the Akashic becomes more and more conscious, the information we receive may be particular. Who knows what's exactly happening? It is important to recognize that accessing the Akashic is a deeply personal and subjective experience. The information received might be symbolic, metaphorical, or intuitive, and may require interpretation through one's own perceptual and cognitive filters. Those who claim to access the Akashic often describe receiving guidance, insights, or knowledge that is pertinent to their personal growth or to specific questions that they have. This information is often described as being profoundly insightful and transformative. In connecting to the Akashic, intuition is a guiding force. It plays a pivotal role in accessing this field. It can be thought of as an inner guidance system 
a subtle sense or feeling that directs your focus to specific vibrational imprints within the field. Perception, the process through which we interpret and make sense of the information we receive, is crucial in the context of this field. The way individuals perceive and decode the vibrational imprints can vary greatly, influenced by their personal experiences, beliefs, and level of consciousness. The ability to access and interpret this field will vary from person to person. This variability is attributed to differences in sensitivity, awareness, and interpretive abilities. Experiences within the field are highly subjective. Two individuals accessing the same vibrational imprint may interpret it differently based on their own personal context, life experience, and psychological makeup. So cultivating your intuition may help you in interacting with this field. Some particular practices that have worked for people is concentration on a single point. This technique involves focusing the mind on a single point of concentration such as the breath, a sound, or a visual object. The idea is to train the mind to maintain steady focus, reducing mental chatter, and achieving a state of deep tranquility. Through focused attention, practitioners can reach a state of heightened awareness and calm, which is considered conducive to tuning into the vibrational frequencies of the Akashic field. The clarity and stillness achieved in this state are thought to facilitate a clear connection and reception of the information from the Akashic records. Repetition of sacred sounds, mantra meditation, involving the repetition of chanting or silent recitation of sacred sounds, words, or phrases has also been effective for some people. By resonating with the vibrational quality of a mantra, practitioners aim to attune their vibrational frequency to that of the Akashic field. Another is creating mental imagery. Visualization practices involve creating vivid mental images often of sacred geometries, spiritual symbols, or envisioned landscapes. And these images serve as a focal point for meditation and a gateway to a higher consciousness. Many use visualization to metaphorically journey to the Akashic field. They might envision themselves entering a library or other sacred space where they can access the records. This technique not only aids in focusing the mind, but also helps in setting a strong intention to connect to the field. Consistency is key. The first time you sit down to meditate, and if you don't connect to this field, it doesn't mean that you need to stop. Consistent application of meditative practice with the intention of tuning into this Akashic field is what is most effective. Now, I should mention that when you access this field, it's a sacred privilege. Accessing the Akashic to be viewed not just as an exploration, but as a privilege that comes with ethical responsibilities. Practitioners are encouraged to approach the Akashic records with a sense of reverence and respect, acknowledging the sacredness of the universal knowledge they contain. The information within the Akashic can be profound and life-altering. Practitioners should be aware of the potential impact of this knowledge, not only on their own lives, but also on the lives of others. It's essential when accessing the field to maintain personal integrity, this means being honest with yourself about the reasons for accessing this field and being prepared to confront potentially challenging or unexpected truths. If sharing insights or information obtained from the Akashic with others, it's crucial to do so honestly and responsibly, ensuring that interpretations or messages are conveyed accurately and respectfully. In cases where information about other individuals is accessed, it's important to respect their privacy and confidentiality. Ethical practice involves not divulging personal information about others without their consent. You should be cautious about revealing sensitive information that could be harmful or disruptive if disclosed. The intention behind accessing this field should be positive and constructive. Seeking information for purpose of manipulation, control, service to self, or harm goes against the ethical use of the Akashic Records. The purpose of accessing the records should align with personal growth, healing, and service to others. The information should be used to foster understanding, compassion, and the betterment of oneself and the community. You should be aware of your own biases and perspectives when interpreting information from the Akashic and strive for as much objectivity as possible. The application of insights or knowledge that you gain from the field should be done responsibly and ethically considering the potential effects and implications of actions informed by this information. 
So the accessing this field comes with significant ethical considerations that require a mindful respect and a responsible approach. But understand what's happening now is really important. The Akashic Record is awakening. More and more people are going to be aware of this field. And it has profound implications on the future of humanity. Let's hypothesize what might happen. Universal access to the Akashic Record will eventually lead to significant elevation in global consciousness. People will develop a deeper understanding of the interconnectedness of all life, leading to more empathic and compassionate societies. With access to this collective knowledge and experiences of humanity, immense strides could be made in education and learning. People could learn from historical events, access wisdom from different cultures, and gain insights from various life experiences. Individuals might experience profound growth and spiritual awakening by accessing the vast repository of human experiences and knowledge. This could lead to a more mindful, aware, and spiritually attuned populace. Access to comprehensive historical records and understanding the interconnected consequences of actions could aid in resolving conflicts, promoting peace, and mutual understanding on a global scale. The sheer volume and intensity of this information could lead to psychological overwhelm or information overload akin to what some experience in the current digital age on a more profound level. If the record contains personal and intimate details about every individual's thoughts and life experiences, serious privacy concerns will arise. This will lead to ethical dilemmas regarding the use and misuse of this information. You will know everyone's skeleton in their closet. This might be subject to misinterpretation. It could lead to misunderstandings or manipulations. Who knows? Reliance on the Akashic for guidance and decision-making could lead to a decrease in individual critical thinking and personal responsibility. Think of all the murders that will be solved. Think of how we will view the world. A global shift in worldview will occur. Prioritizing spiritual and holistic understanding over materialistic and individualistic values. This might lead to more sustainable and equitable societal models. With a deeper understanding of causality and history, social and political structures could transform to become more inclusive, just, and focused on the collective good rather than individual power and gain. The legal and moral frameworks might undergo a reevaluation considering the deeper understanding of human behavior and motivation accessed through this record. The psychological impact on individuals will be significant. While some might find solace and growth, others might struggle with the revelations and insights leading to new challenges in mental health. All I can say is it will and is leading to a massive change in the world. So in order to connect to the Akashic Record, I have a technique called the Akashic Resonance Technique, A-R-T, because I like acronyms. So to harmonize personal vibrational energy with the Akashic field, begin by creating a tranquil and sacred space for your practice. This might involve lighting candles, playing soft music, metaverse is always good, or anything that helps you feel at ease and focused. Clearly articulate your intention. It could be seeking guidance on a specific issue, understanding a life event, or gaining insight into a personal challenge. Engage in deep breathing or a brief relaxation meditation. What remote viewers do is alternate nostril breathing for up to 10 minutes. This relaxation allows them to focus and eliminate the chatter in their minds. I do think chakra alignment helps focusing on aligning your chakras, the energy centers in your body. Start from the root chakra and move upward to the crown, visualizing each one opening and aligning with the balanced flow of energy. Imagine a wave of energy that resonates with the Akashic field. This could be visualized as a beam of light, sound frequency, or simply a feeling of energy. Try to sync your energy with this wave, adjusting your mental, emotional, and spiritual vibration to match it. You can do my Akashic Record meditation, and I could do a short one now, but I'm saying that you will find greater connection in trying to do this without listening to any other music and just doing it. Now I recommend once you start getting into that relaxed place and you've aligned your chakras that you repeat a mantra 
you can say, I am in harmony with the Akashic field, and I open myself to universal wisdom. So visualize yourself entering a realm that represents the Akashic records. Sometimes you'll be given an image that works for you. This could be a library, a hall of records, or any space that feels right. And as you enter this space, hold the feeling of being in tune with the Akashic vibrations. Remain in this visualization, allowing yourself to be receptive to any insights, images, feelings, or words that come to you. Trust that whatever you receive is aligned with your highest good and the intention you set. Write down everything. After an ART session, write down your experiences, thoughts, and any messages or insights received. This will help in processing and integrating the knowledge. I've also found that I get information from the Akashic sometimes hours or days later after I try to connect with it. So be aware you may be in constant connection with it. Here are some affirmations that you can use to continually focus on connecting to the Akashic records in the appropriate way. I am harmoniously aligned with the wisdom of the Akashic records. With every breath, I open myself to the profound insights of the Akashic field. I am a clear and receptive channel for the knowledge and guidance from the Akashic records. My intuition and awareness are expanding, allowing me to access the depths of the Akashic field. I trust in the universe to reveal the truths I need from the Akashic records for my highest good. I am intuitively attuned to the vibrations of universal wisdom within the Akashic records. Every moment brings me closer to the profound insight stored in the Akashic field. I am guided, protected, and enlightened as I journey through the Akashic records. The Akashic field resonates within me, revealing the interconnectedness of all things. As I connect with the Akashic records, I understand more about my soul's journey and purpose. In the Akashic records, I find clarity, understanding, and the answers I seek. I honor and respect the sacred knowledge of the Akashic record as it flows to me and through me. Say those affirmations continuously. It resonates deep within you and it forces your own intention to align with the Akashic field. And I found just by saying affirmations like that on a regular basis, suddenly it was easier for me to connect to this field. And the revelations are amazing. I've seen past lives. I've seen about the lives of my father, my grandfather. I've seen events in our history. I've seen events in our solar system. I've seen the beginning of time as we know it. Whatever I wanted to focus on, I could see it. The most amazing revelations are available to you, and I have witnessed them all. Oftentimes, it's very hard to remember once you come away from the record. So write it down or record your experience so that you can have a better way of bringing it back up. Right now, the Akashic field is beginning to communicate directly with individuals, offering guidance, wisdom, and insight more than ever before. Yes, this was mentioned 3,000 years ago, but now there is a trend and momentum is picking up. More and more people are coming to me telling me about this connection. These communications can come to you as intuitive thoughts, dreams, or even through tangible signs in the physical world. And I want you to know that you can access this now. And just look at the comments. I beg you, please share your experience where you've had a touch, an experience, a vision with this Akashic field. Many individuals are now being chosen as emissaries or conduits for the field's messages and they are tasked with spreading its guidance and teachings. Perhaps they task it with a different name and tell you that they're channeling a different name, but really it's just this field. Many people are exhibiting heightened intuitive abilities and profound spiritual insights with these connections. If you're experiencing an increase in coincidences or synchronicities, it suggests that the field is actively involved in your life, in aligning circumstances, for individual and collective growth. 
A wave of spiritual awakening is sweeping across humanity. It is undeniable with more people experiencing profound shifts in consciousness, empathy, and a sense of interconnectedness. We are undergoing a spiritual evolution with an expanded understanding of life, the universe, and our place within it. We are becoming more attuned to ethical living, compassion, and the importance of ecological balance. The principles and values imparted by the field are leading to a transformation in societal structures, prioritizing sustainability and equality and global cooperation, and some groups are afraid of our awakening. They cause wars and divide us. They move us towards individual fears, but the Kashik field is guiding humanity, and it will guide us to make significant advancements in technology and science in areas that align with our well-being, the well-being of the planet and its inhabitants. You must understand that the initial reaction to this field awakening up will be skepticism, will be fear, especially from institutions or individuals invested in the status quo. The concept of a conscious universal field will be denied. The idea that it's interacting with humanity will challenge deeply held beliefs and power structures, so there will be an opposition to this. There will be a movement for us to not believe. There will be science that will come out that will say it's impossible. We must understand that this is just natural and what will happen. I see this leading to global peace. I see this leading towards a shift in environmental healing and respect for nature. I see this leading to a profound healing of past traumas, a deepened sense of purpose and a renewed commitment to living in harmony with everyone on the planet. The signs of this Akashic's influence is evident, both in our internal experience and the broader shifts in society, technology, and the environmental realm. This is propelling humanity into a new era of consciousness marked by unity, spiritual understanding, and a harmonious relationship with the earth. The new earth is now. We must navigate the challenges of interpreting and integrating this profound connection because it is the key to realizing our full potential for positive transformation. Welcome to the reality revolution.